So we'll now go into our third uh, lecture and the last one for the day by Dr. Taufik Dadli. Taufik Dadli, he um, is uh, a lecturer at the Hebrew University at the Department of Islamic and Middle Eastern Studies and the Department of History of Art. Uh, he started as an archeologist. Actually, this is the point where I say that uh, I'm getting old. He was my student. Um, and he specializes in most, uh, Muslim culture. And um, he also worked for many years at the Israel Antiquities Authority, uh, getting much experience as an archeologist. But then uh, for his uh, doctoral research, he went into Persian miniatures. He studied Persian as well. So he is actually um, dealing with many, many aspects of Muslim uh, culture. But then the lecture today is about his finds together with Tel Aviv University and uh, the Oriental Institute of Chicago, Professor Donald Whitcomb, at the uh, site of Khirbat Kerak that was recognized, identified at Sinabra, um, the very early uh, state house of the Umayyads, was probably the place where Muawiya was used to sit, and also later caliphs and the house of caliphs. So I'm very glad uh, to invite uh, Taufik uh, to speak to us and let us know about the latest finds. I actually, the first excavations uh, were published in 2017, but we're going to uh, hear now about the latest finds, uh, especially about the mosque, for which Taufik got a special grant and uh, get, uh, got very important finds. So thank you, so Taufik, and the floor is yours. We will uh, talk mo mainly uh, about, I will try at least, um, about Muawiyah. Um, I'm saying that because we already published and mentioned uh, other Umayyad, maybe caliphs like uh, Abdel Malik, um, adding or building also there. So uh, my main uh, today is Maui and his work there. Um, so um, medieval geographer Yaqut al-Hamawi in his Mu'azam al-Buldan refers to a Sinabra, and I called a Sinabra written with Kasra and then Fatha, both with Shadda, a place in the Jordan district opposite Aqaba Fik. A distance of three miles from Tabaria, Muawiyah spent the winters there. Two uh, essential points uh, um, emerge from Yaqut's brief uh, account. The first about the location of the site and the second uh, about its date. A fiqh or uh, fiqh is identified on the eastern side of the southern part of the Sea of Galilee. Therefore, Sinabra should be located on the opposite southwestern side of the lake, as suggested by Whitcomb. Furthermore, it seems that the main road, which once connected between the district capital, Tabaria, and the main capital of the Umayyad dynasty, Damascus, went around uh, the southern tip of the Sea of Galilee, ascended to Aqaba Thib, on the eastern side of the lake and continue to the north to Damascus. And about this, I, I see also Amikam is here. So this already, uh, I'm quoting here, his work from 1999. Caliph Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, referred to by Yaqut, succeeded his brother Yazid ibn Abi Sufyan in his dual rule as military commander of the Muslims and governor of the province of Damascus after the latest death in the plague of uh, Amwas. This suggests that Muawiyah was governing the region at least 20 years before his appointment as Khalif or Caliph in 1661. 
Thus, the palace where Muawiyah used to spend the winter was built either prior to his appointment as caliph when he was governor or during his caliphate. The royal residence at El Sinabra could therefore have been built any time between the years 639 and 680. Another reference to Muawiyah's use of or stay in El Sinabra is provided by Ibn Asakir, who relates a story about Muawiyah with a long chain of his neck. Um, and I'm quote, quoting. He said, Muawiyah was preaching to us in Sinabra, and he said in the Battle of Safin, 300 friends of the Prophet fought beside me, and not one of them is beside me now. This refers to my main, um, my end, sorry. Because when a man's friend expires, he expires too. And it was the last meeting with him, end of quote. Now, um, three excavation seasons were carried out in the Sinabra, or better known as Early Bronze Age site of Al Karak or Betierach Day, during February uh, 18 and February and September uh, 12, uh, 2019. Sorry, these renewed excavations were undertaken after the publication of our report Betierach Three Hellenistic Criteria and Islamic Sinabra that. Uh, I'm thanking uh, Katya that she just carried this volume with her, in which we published the findings of the previous excavations carried in the 50s. So here I'm, I'm showing, we were uh, in this report at least, we're dealing with uh, mainly uh, excavated, already excavated and exposed material from the palace uh, which I have to say is most of the uh, remains that uh, from this resident or from this uh, palace were already there or excavated or exposed when we uh, entered the site. Um, and we just tried to make some uh, order with those um, old, let's say, materials. And this was part of our discussion in this volume. So, we discussed the, the Hellenistic phases and then the early Islamic, which is mainly the palace that I'm now uh, elaborating about. So the renewed excavations aim to touch unexcavated soil uh, in the hope of finding some clear stratigraphy as well as some ceramics and other small finds. A third aim was the uh, exposure of a new unit. So I have to say, um, coming to a site which was uh, extensively excavated before uh, is, is something that um, um, I bring with it a, a huge a challenge to, as I, I, I noted, we, would, we wanted to find some unexcavated areas, to find some materials to help us date. Uh, and you will see how this stratigraphy is working here. So this was one of the aims coming back after publishing the uh, report. Since um, uh, remains of a bath and an audience hall were already exposed on site, we thought that there may uh, be a third element that constituted an essential part in any Umayyad palace, namely a mosque. So, um, we already published that, so we have several units here, and you can see the Qasr and the Dar on the northern part, and uh, Hammam on the southern um, uh, end. So, those three units uh, were there when we uh, came back in uh, 2018. And I'm giving some pictures of um, the lower part is the Hammam, or the remains of that. Um, uh, hammam and uh, some pictures of the mosaics where we uh, also can see at least two uh, interference in those mosaics, uh, something which relate maybe to a kind of an iconoclasm, sorry, uh, that we already discussed in our report. And then uh, the dar, which also already, was already excavated, excavated by the Chicago team in the 60s. And there we dealt with another issue of how to publish such a, or to make an order in such a mixed, let's say, published material, uh, where 
there was a church, so that's why they um, demolished or took out the dar that we uh, suggest here on the northern part. So if today you will visit the site, which was um, nicely um, maintained uh, recently, you will not find the dar because excavators of the Chicago team went down and uh, revealed a church. So uh, those uh, were already there and we are coming to add a new uh, annex or a new part. Despite the challenges of recent disturbance, uh, undocumented excavations, erosion and landscaping, which of often frustrated our attempts to identify the remains of the dismantled uh, palace, preserved only at its foundations, we ultimately succeeded in tracing a significant, completely unexpected annex to the palace situated outside its northern fortification wall. So <clears throat> um, the three excavation seasons concentrated on revealing the remains of an edifice to the north of the fortifications. The remains of the structure revealed consist of three west uh, east rows of circular bases, each con con containing six bases, an eastern boundary wall uh, marked here uh, wall W1 or wall one, and the northern fortification wall serving also as the southern boundary of the structure. On the same lines as the bases, three west-east walls were also exposed, and those are marked as W2, W3, and W4, emerging from a north-south wall, W1, that extended from the northern tower of the Qasr. A fifth wall uh, running from east to west was also exposed, damaged at three points at the uh, column basis. This wall probably predates the whole or at least the column basis. Marble uh, column, <coughs> sorry, bases are inserted in three of the six bases of the southern row and one in the western edge of the middle row. As the northern part was damaged through erosion and modern interventions, we do not have any evidence from this site. As related to the western area, traces of gravel pavement were exposed with patches of white plaster. The remain, remains rises Rice, sorry, sorry, some challenging questions. The southern row differs from the two rows further to the north, and the nature of wall four running through the whole width of the structure is not yet clear. Um, the bases of the southern row are built out of rubble, uh, forming the base and supporting ma marble bases. We assume that there were also marble bases inserted in the other rubble bases. Uh, the two northern rows are built <coughs> out of solid molded mortar mixed with fieldstones. A similar method of mixed mortar and fieldstone forms the core of walls one till four. It appears that there were some changes in the plan and the southern uh, base row was added. Perhaps wall four meant to support a row of bases or columns, and then some changes were made and it was canceled and the southern row was built. In either case, the reconstruction of the remains can be shaped uh, to a hypostyle hole composed out of at least three aisles parallel to the northern uh, wall of the Qasr. Wall one can stand as the eastern border of this hole. 15 bays are enclosed in this hole, supported by 18 columns and paved by plaster lined on gravel. This hole lacks the essential niche situated in the middle of the southern wall that may be used as the mihrab of the mosque. However, the order of the construction, four meter bays, uh, and the open facade may support the assumption that it was used as a mosque. If we accept the current 
conditions in which there is no northern boundary and not a western one, we end with a colonnaded hole with two closing um, 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 sorry, um, walls. One on the south comprised of the Qasr northern boundary and the second on the east where some remains were newly exposed. Regarding the northern side, we assume that the hole was open to this direction, to a courtyard that unfortunately is not there anymore out of the circumstances described above. A hole of a praying um, uh, hole with a courtyard standing uh, opposite the Qibla wall is generally the standard for either early or late most. What is unusual is a hole open also on another side, here the western one, as no traces of a bordering wall was found uh, on this direction and the discovery of a gravel floor that also paved the colonnaded hole on this side, we assume that the hole was open also from its western side. Although we are not sure yet if the columns supported arches or beams, we may borrow at least just for the imagined reconstruction of the whole, the facade of the Umayyad Mosque uh, at Damascus. Here, uh, access to the praying hall is made through an arcade open to the courtyard. Perhaps such an opening used to stand on the northern and the western side. This will allow access from both sides. Whatever the use of the building may have been, huge efforts were made to level the whole northern area of the Qasr. After leveling, gravel pavement was laid, which probably supported a plaster floor and perhaps some stone slabs. Uh, forming a courtyard to the west of the hypostyle hall that probably served as a mosque. Access to the level courtyard from the west was made by a staircase, as you can see, that was attached to the northwestern uh, castle tower. A door situated in the middle of the northern uh, wall provided access to the mosque from the castle. The bases were cutting walls and domestic uh, installations from the Hellenistic and early Bronze um, uh, eras. At least one Hellenistic structure can be reconstructed on the western side, marked here in yellow. This enclosed at least two terracotta ovens. Uh, some remains of the early Bronze era were found in, the, in between the bases in the eastern side, marked here in red. All stratigraphy, gravel floor with the uh, bases, Hellenistic domestic remains, and early bronze walls and plaster floor were revealed in less than half a meter of stratified soil. A similar stratigraphy of Hellenistic remains lying right below the remains from the early Islamic period was revealed in each of the place sections. Uh, palace section, sorry. And the Hellenistic remains can easily date it following their orientation, which differ from the early Islamic one and the Bronze Age also. So dating here in this site at least could be done somehow um, in general by orientation. So, and you can see the different orientation of the blue layer, uh, and then the yellow one and the red one. Each one belongs to another um, different um, era. The main dating finds are several Cooper coins from uh, in the gravel layer. The date as Arabo-Byzantian indicates that the leveling, paving and construction were made during the early Umayyad period. And uh, we have three phase two coins. And here, when I say phase two, I refer to transitional coinage phase two. And I'm following here, phase two coins were struck from the mid 70s till the <coughs> early 90s of the seventh century. And I'm following here terminology uh, suggested by schools and Ode. 
And this is part of a huge discussion about early coinage during Umayyad and the other caliphs. And here we have um, 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 uh, like um, one of the coins that we found and a parallel one at least uh, from other uh, sides. So we have three Faz two coins. Again, uh, those coins that the, the upper limit is the 90s of the 7th seven, uh, century. Uh, and they were found in this uh, gravel uh, uh, layer that comprised the floor of the hypostyle building and the courtyard to the west of it. This floor was lined with the construction of the pillars and it uh, is part of a leveling project that went hand in hand with the erection of the northern annex. Hence, the three coins are very important here for the dating of this annex. The three of them belong to the Schitopolis uh, mint that uh, operated under Muawiyah. This uh, date, the northern annex, or at least the hypostyle building to the fairs under Muawiyah, meaning that the first Umayyad fairs of the Qasr comprise this unit that may be functioned as the Qasr's mosque. Now, and this we already published and is uh, like, common known for, for people dealing with Muawiyah and Umayyad, but I will put uh, this in context uh, at least. So evidence for Muawiyah's interest and settlement in the region during his early days as Khalif could be gathered from his renovations of the installations uh, in the hot springs at al Hamma or Hamad, Hamad Gader in a dedication inscription written in Greek and dated to the 5th of December 662 it is said that in the days of Abdullah Muawiyah, the commander of the faithful, the Kalibanus of the Ba'ath, here were, was cleared and ren renewed. Now, the location uh, of this monumental inscription and a central niche inside one of the main halls of the Ba'ath complex could hint to the scope of the work. However, the more significant site connected with Muawiyah, which served as his capital un until he assumed the caliphate is El Jabiyah in the Jawlan, situated not too far from Sinabra. Muawiyah establishes palace on back to Sinabra. Uh, Muawiyah establishes palace on what was probably a largely abandoned and secluded mound marked on only by the ruins of a, the three episodal um, church at a pleasant spot with fresh water on hand a short distance away from what would become the provincial capital Tabariya. The style of the uh, architecture was formed formal and, imp and imperial with uh, deep foundation and leveling operations that completely disregarded ancient construction, creating an, an imposing platform with excellent views in every direction. Although the palatial complex stood by the lake shore, Muawiyah and his successor uh, invested considerable effort in uh, Delver uh, spring water to the palace, tapping the main aqueduct to Tabaria and conveying the water through channels, siphons, and pipes to the palace and the bath. <coughs> <coughs> to conclude this short uh, talk, I have to say this first phase of the palace is dated by historical sources to the reign of, of Muawiyah who served as the governor of the province before he became caliph. The primary analysis of the finds date the hypostyle hall or the mosque to Muawiyah or at least before Abdel Malik's date. This unit and the scale of the walls on the northern part of the Qasr uh, clarify the nature of the palace that may be described more as a complex since a further unit to the north, the Dar was previously revealed. Although few small finds were found, they add, added further confirmation regarding the date of that palace complex. This unit standing to the north emphasizes the palace of the northern, the place, sorry, of the northern entrance. Here we were facing a major problem regarding um, 
the southern entrance. That entrance is bordered by two square towers. Although it leads to the ground surrounding the basilica, it does not face the main facade. This means that visitors approaching the castle from the south were not able to enter the main hall from the main entrance. That probably was situated in the north, uh, northern part parallel to the apse. Hence, when visitors entered the castle from the relatively narrow entrance in the north, north they faced the main facade of the main hall or the throne hall, we should say. When approaching the castle from the north, visitors could also enter the mosque situated on the same entrance. On the opposite side of the castle, the bath was situated behind the rear wall of the basilica throne hall. It could be due to the early date of this palace that it follows few of the expected uh, blueprints for Umayyad palace construction. Now, uh, we also play, play with, uh, let's say, plans, and we have such um, um, example to give in Anjar, where is the uh, like a palace unit and a mosque uh, attached to it, something, of course, the Anjar unit is uh, more to what we know later from the Umayyad palaces, but at least the mosque is not so far, and it's, it's, we can say attached to the um, palace unit in Anjar. Maybe we have the same um, um, situation uh, here in uh, Sinatra. So um, I thank you for your uh, listening, and also thank the organizer for um, inviting me to give this uh, talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tofik. Uh, a very important finding. Uh, as many of you might know, um, this is very much related to uh, what I've been doing with my uh, staff in Tiberia. So uh, we really feel related. Um, also, uh, in terms of architecture, uh, the same building pattern, techniques. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to ask you if you have questions for Tofik, um, some clarifications about the excavations. So I will ask you, <laughs> Tofik. Um, I will start asking as an archaeologist uh, very technical questions, but they have a reason. What's the size of this uh, of of the remains that you reconstructed um, of this? Uh, fraction of uh, building um, that you uh, found. And I'll tell you why I'm asking him, because uh, in this uh, time, in the Umayyad period, we, we keep seeing, I, I keep seeing a pattern, maybe I'm crazy, but I keep seeing a pattern of uh, metrological uh, units uh, repeating themselves, and they are so close to Tiberius that perhaps they have uh, some relation between themselves. Uh, now just um, uh, like uh, from east to west, something like 20 meters, and from um, south to north, it's 15 meters. <coughs> like without just counting or uh, measuring uh, the space between uh, the columns and the walls around. Uh, why, why don't you think that you have a symmetrical building, that you cannot actually repeat what you found <laughs> on the other side and just not finding it, just being a matter of things being cleared uh, modern, in modern times or even in early times? Uh, it is a possibility. Um, you are... Um, and like right to, to suggest, but we, of course, we uh, uh, on the other side, where is uh, let's say the, the rest of the building or supposed rest of the building on the western side is uh, is there. 
Um, we just did some uh, sections. Uh, uh, we didn't want to uh, interfere too much uh, in the, it's um, like, a, you know, a kind of a park, uh, with the cemetery uh, attached, Kinneret Cemetery. So yeah, uh, we were limited, but uh, even in our sections, we didn't find um, any um, basis, uh, and we tried to really follow, uh, and you see clear lines, we tried to follow those uh, bases, uh, and we found more and more remains of the floor without a column basis. So it was paved, and we found the remains, but without uh, uh, any traces of uh, column bases, and as you know, those column bases are fairly, uh, let's say, heavily built. And if you even take them out in modern time, I believe we archaeologists have the ability to at least uh, see um, the effect of uh, modern uh, interference. So we didn't show such a um, work there. but. Your suggestion is, is there, and and I can't say um, nothing is lying there because we didn't do uh, excavate the whole uh, area. Yeah. I hope I'm not being too technical, but what I saw, I saw five aisles, right, that you found, five aisles, uh, on, uh, on, and if you put the air transept and then you put another five aisles, you get to 11, which is very much what we have in Tiberias, 11 aisles transversal yeah, to the Kibla yeah. wall. But we, uh, we can do also the, uh, the other uh, side, uh, Katya, what you do sometimes. We can cut uh, um, something um, like in a, in a half. Uh, so we have all, only half it. Uh, and what is also um, um, preventing us from uh, suggesting such a reconstruction is the entrance from the north. Because this entrance will stand in the middle of uh, uh, the structure that you just um, um, suggest. So, um, yeah. But uh, yeah. those are good questions. Um, uh, as you know, we archaeologists are here for uh, technical questions. So this, is, this, those are our texts. What, what can we do? Yeah. So I. I assume nothing from the decoration remains, or does? Do you have anything that remains from the decoration? Um, uh, in the old uh, um, field diaries from the 50s, um, PLO guy and Pesach Baradon are noting uh, some uh, pieces of um, uh, plaster or a painted plaster, but unfortunately nothing, and the nature of this plaster is um, it's not uh, described, or, and we don't have any uh, uh, piece left uh, to describe. Uh, in the hammam, which is, um, uh, we believe, it's, uh, it's a not, not a matter of belief, it's a matter of excavations we found in the foundation uh, trench, uh, post-reform um, coin. Uh, so it's, it's the hammam was added, uh, as we understand it, uh, by Abdel Malik, maybe. And there we uh, also, we have evidences of decoration in the hammam. Um, and, but again, just um, uh, notes in field uh, diaries. Uh, and the only decoration I, I, uh, I can show, uh, uh, those are the mosaics that uh, I tried to show two pictures of them. Um, and the remains are not so much more than the two pictures that I showed. And you can see more in our report, but um, uh, most of the mosaics were damaged when we uh, entered the, um, the site. Um, and they decorated mainly the main basilica or the main throne hall. Yeah. Uh, Uzi, Uzi. If you don't mind, a question to you. Uh, to me. Okay. Uh, how does the Sinabra, the Islamic Sinabra, 
relates to you dig in uh, nearby Migdal. Oh, wow. Well, uh, this is really amazing that you're asking. Uh, Taufik, I, I'm not even sure that Taufik knows today. Actually, I'm here, but uh, my heart is in Magdala in the north because I just started today a, an excavation. Uh, and it's in, actually, it's in the context because it's in uh, collaboration with the custody of the Holy Land uh, and funded by the custodian. So it relates to what we were talking before about the custodian. And... Um, and there we are excavating uh, at the site of Magdala, which is mainly Hellenistic, Roman, uh, not so much Byzantine, uh, in, in the area where we are. But there is lots of early Islamic, and there is a bathhouse. And the reason that I'm connected is that because I think uh, there is a relation. And it sounds almost like there is Sinabra to the south of Tiberias, and perhaps uh, this uh, compound to the north of Tiberias. So it might be related. And not forget that we have Khirbet al Minya even further north. So at the same time, they had the two palaces actually. Yes. Not far away. Well, Khirbet Minya would be later than the palace that uh, Taufik and uh, Donald are excavating. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't know about Magdala. This is uh, now the big question. That's a, that's a big question. Yeah. Uh, but Taufik, I, I have, uh, we still have some time. So I have a question. If you could return to the slide with the coins. Uh, that you showed. They are very important because this is a uh, very important basis for the for for dating. Uh, the one to the the bottom left. Uh, Not mine. Think? No, the two on the bottom are just examples from um, one of the articles. Uh, uh, the ones with the um, yellow background uh, are from our excavation. Because the, the one, the, the bottom left, it looks like a standing caliph fields. Yeah, no, yes. no, I'm, I'm yeah. I was just referring to the one on the right, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes, Reuven <laughs> Uh, thank you, Taufik. Um, you know, we're still we're still enjoying a month or so ago. You took us to uh, Khirbat Mafjar, so uh, this is a vicarious, another one, a vicarious experience. Um, and you've spoken uh, about a later period uh, about uh, the development of local style as opposed to the metropolitan style. Um, and I wonder if you can say something like that for this early period. Is there a can you can you discern a local a local Palestinian or southern Bilad de Sham style compared to the Damascus style? Or, uh, in other words, who are the builders? And who are the, who are the engineers and who are the builders? Yeah, um, when we were like uh, touring the uh, Jericho area, we went also to Nabi Musa, which uh, I presented here uh, three years ago, Ruben, when you were chairing. Uh, and I was talking mainly about the Mamluk era. And there, I, um, in our visit to the shrine, I talked about local uh, style. And it's, it was like more to the Mamluk period. Uh, here, when I talk about the Umayyad uh, period, um, um, like um, what I can say is, uh, and this also was referred by Katya now when we talk about Khirbat uh, al for example, compared to Sinabra, um, we have a certain plan um, emerging maybe toward uh, the beginning of the 8th century. And then we see an example also in Khirbat uh, al-Mifjar with a uh, palace unit, the Qasr. Uh, and there you have some features that keep repeats themselves. So uh, the Dar and other units that are well known for people who deal with such things for this uh, period. Uh, because, and this is maybe part of, uh, maybe of my excuse of misunderstanding, um, I'm using this uh, term like may, maybe the, the, because of the early uh, phase of this palace, uh, Maui especially, uh, there, is, there was no um, certain 
um, plan for Umayyad palaces. So we can say maybe they were playing with plans and plans were, were not related to a region or let's say Syria or Palestine. They were like mainly related to, I don't know, skills and patron uh, who could um, um, have people from maybe local people, but uh, um, here he used this uh, basilical shape. In other, um, and we, we don't have much of Muawiyah, of course, uh, we read about Qubat al-Khadra and other places, but we don't need them in reality, unfortunately. Uh, they were not excavated, or, or neither in Damascus nor in uh, al -Jabia. So I can't speak much about Muawiyah style or Muawiyah regional or imperial style uh, much. But I'm sure Katya also can uh, add here, maybe. Thank you. Yeah, actually, um, I was talking to Chris uh, earlier today. Uh, the building techniques changed. And today we are able, in terms of archaeology, to pinpoint, oh, this is already early Islamic. This is 7th century. So we, we are now, at least uh, according to the building technique that you saw here, those very coarse functions that they just throw into a pit like he showed here, the very pragmatic way of building. It's what we see in Tiberias on the first phase of the mosque, which I also think is in between 660 and 680, uh, according to the coins and pottery. Um, and that's what's interesting, where they are coming from, uh, the builders. So I was hoping that Christian would say, oh, I see this in Yemen. So, but uh, no, he wasn't so... Uh, uh, it's not impossible because there are many Yemeni uh, coming uh, mm. in Syria. Yeah. Uh, but uh, many of the aristocratic classes were killed uh, during mm -hmm. uh, the 6th century uh, mm. wars. And we don't know if uh, there were uh, still mm -hmm. uh, specialists of building, uh, of building. architects, uh -huh. and so on, but, but perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we still, we still basically have to look for where this technique uh, is coming from, it's not local. Uh, we see it uh, in Hamatveria, we see it in Seferis, we see it in other places, mainly uh, in the north, but later on we also see it in Aqaba, for instance, in the mosque that uh, Professor Whitcomb, who collaborates with Tofik, uh, also excavates. So it's a technique that remains. Uh, the only city with the remains of the 7th and 8th century is Nejrana. Mm -hmm. In Yemen, there is no construction. Uh, so it's worthwhile yeah, checking. It's mm -hmm. worthwhile checking uh, Najran. But yes. uh, there was no mm -hmm. more good excavations in Najran. Mm -hmm. so, uh, oh, important. <laughs> Katia, maybe the, the new excavations now in, in the Rahat region that you, I know, uh, already visited also. Um, I don't know, we, they still have to publish and to see uh, coins and other materials, but we see also maybe other pattern, building patterns there, there. So maybe this uh, kind of concrete uh, that we see in the north uh, is not so uh, used in the south, except what you just said. Uh, later on in Aqaba, we see it. Uh, in a, so it's maybe it's a northern pattern. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, yeah, I, I was in Rahat, and it's a different time, type of building. Yes. Uh, so the two mosques, uh, I don't know if you know about it, La uh, two years ago and then this year, uh, there were two early mosques, open mosques, uh, found uh, in Rahat while they were they are expanding uh, the city, and they are doing infrastructure work, and they recently found also a dar, what seems to be a dar. So that's also interesting. Uh, to learn about this early Islamic uh, structure uh, in Rahat. So that we'll have to learn about from the uh, Israel Antiques Authority. Um, it's, so this is uh, topics, topics for next uh, lectures, for future lectures. Okay. Since you mentioned Aqaba, any idea about the idea behind the orientation of this mosque? Um, Tawfiq. I, I yes, please. 
Yes. Uh, Uzi is asking. Yeah. Uzi is asking about. Yeah. Mihlat is the big mosque of uh, Aqaba. Is to the southwest. So what's the idea behind it? What we uh, the main challenge in in our let's say mosque is that uh, we don't have any uh, uh, mihrab, but. Uh, uh, at least the, the Qibla wall is facing south. So it's, uh, I don't know uh, about Aqaba and why, uh, at least our, if it's a mosque, uh, uh, it's facing south, so. Uh. Uh, the only thing that I could suggest, but it's just a suggestion, is an architect coming perhaps from the east, used to build in the east, and knowing that Qibla is in the southwest, and repeating that in Aqaba, uh, just perhaps uh, because it's not even uh, what uh, Professor Sharon was talking about. Definitely not Musharika, <laughs> Southwest. So, uh, so yes, this is very puzzling. Uh, but perhaps who knows? Uh, just uh, results. <laughs> is it really, really puzzling? If it was a previous building uh, reused as a mosque. No, there is no. If they added a uh, uh, mihrab, so it was approximately the direction of Mecca. It is not. But but it's a, but it's a new Misr. It's a, in Aqaba, it's in the Misr uh, of the seventh century Misr. But then the mosque is later. But uh, but it's no pre-Islamic. Uh, no, but uh, I don't I don't say pre-Islamic building, but a previous building transformed in a mosque. Yeah. So uh, the orientation is not good. Uh, the whole fortress is yes, new uh, Islamic. In Najran, there is a pre-Islamic building which was transformed in a mosque. Mm -hmm. And by chance, the orientation was good. But it could have been mm -hmm. completely wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. If I, if I may, just, yes, please. Um, there is a small change in there is a small change in the program tomorrow I said there is a small change in the program tomorrow. Uh, Professor Landau Tasseron will replace Ruben Amitai in the chair. Ruben Amitai will spend his days, spend his day in Lida Airport. He needs to be there for about eight hours before he flies. <laughs> so have a good flight and see you tomorrow. Very interesting uh, lecture, and please continue doing that, and uh, we'll learn more about uh, what's happening in the Jundaludum, and perhaps we'll understand more about what's happening in this very early touch of the Islamization of, uh, of this area. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.